Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Ralftree, and I'm a director with Project Art H. I've been asked to speak tonight briefly about working capital and its cousin, trade finance. The business of Projects RH are linking our clients with money. Working capital is fundamental for the good operations of any business. Technically, working capital is defined by accountants as current assets minus current liabilities. More importantly, from a finance and treasury perspective, it's having the necessary money to make the business work. Businesses need to manage their cash flows. So it's not that they don't have assets or they have receivables. It's that they need cash to run their day-to-day -day operations. I think this is probably best explained by an example. One of our clients is a confectionery manufacturer. They have to pay within seven days for the items they have to make chocolates and other confectionery. These items they purchase go into the warehouse, so they need to have some working stock. They then make to order the confectionery for their clients, and they do branded confectionery as well, so some of that goes into the warehouse. They then send the confectionery to their clients. Many of their clients insist on paying them on 90 day terms. Uh, this is well known with Coles and Woolworths. So in between buying the items that make confectionery, they need to pay bills. They've got wages on the 23rd of every month and they have other bills, electricity, rent, uh, patents and machinery repairs. They have to be paid as they go. So they need to have cash available to do this. So what they need to do is either factor their receivables, that means sell them to a company which is called a factoring company, and they get a discount back on what they will receive in three months time. Otherwise, they need to go and borrow from their bank a credit line known as a working capital line to fund their business. What's happening is their clients Coles or Woolworths, for example, are effectively giving themselves a discount by giving them time, themselves time to pay. So the cousin of this is trade finance. And trade finance introduces an exciting language all of its own. But what's important to understand, it's about determining when you get paid. So let's use an example. One of our clients manufactures beef. They grow it and they then send it to an abattoir to have it killed. A, China, a Japanese restaurant rings them and says, we want to buy a container of beef every month. What they arrange then is for their beef to be slaughtered and packed and sent in 25,000 kilo containers. So what are the important issues? First, how much they get paid and when? So what they commonly do is they agree to use the Meat and Livestock Association's table and they use the average price of three days. So it's the day before the slaughter, the day of the slaughter and the day after the slaughter. So then the next important issue, issue is at what time is the bill to be paid? So normally what happens is a bill of lading is prepared and the beef is exported. So do you pay at the abattoir gate, you pay free on board, or you pay when it's received by the restaurant in Tokyo, and who pays for the freight and insurance? All good questions. Generally, this is covered by a document known as a letter of credit. So the Japanese client issues a letter of credit from their bank to the beef company's bank and that says when payment is due. Most commonly in beef 
It's actually when it's received in Japan and it's checked for quality. And the irony is the other end in cold, it's when it landed on the ship. On each occasion, the master of the ship signs a document which is sent back to the Australian company saying, I have control of the beef or the coal. What's important then is who pays for the freight and insurance. If it's sold FOB free on board the ship, the client pays for the freight and insurance. If it's sold FIS free in store, it's sold so that the Australian company has to pay. What's really important is the relationship you have with the bank, because the bank actually acts as custodian of the documents and in effect, it determines by giving you a discount of that bill when you get paid. So you may have a document that says you're entitled to be paid when the beef is received in Japan. The bank may offer you a discount. You may say, we know the restaurant chain, they're highly creditable and reputable. We will discount the bill to you and pay you 97% of the bill today. There are other people involved in the trade that can help you also. There are factoring houses, there are trade insurance corporations, and if you're going to new markets, the Australian government has a specialist trade organisation called EFIC, which is the Export Finance Corporation. All these factors ensure that the company has cash flow. What is critical in managing a business is that they are seen to be able to pay their bills in a timely manner, whether their clients are paying them in a timely manner or not. And you need to pay things like insurance and wages. There are just no questions about that. So most organisations have a mix of funding, but the most important of that is a working capital line from your bank. At Project RH, we help companies organise their finances and prepare documents to support their applications for finance with their bank and for organisations which provide, provide trade finance. My name is Paul Raftery and I'm a director at Project RH. I hope you found this interesting. Good evening.